Hello and welcome. I just wanted to make sure that everything was working before I went live here. So hopefully now I need to turn down the volume up myself. There we go. I just wanted to make sure that everything was working before we got started here. My name is Ellen Fredericia Nilsson and today we will be talking about queen, queens in endgames. We are both live on YouTube on Chess24 and on co-chess twitch channel so if you have any questions anything you're in doubt of please just feel free to ask i will be reading both of the chats taking your suggestions and your questions so without further ado um, i think we should just get started the first position i have picked out here today is of course queen against rook this is a very important endgame that we will look at. Um, it's winning for the queen, but it's actually a bit tricky to do. And you even see the top grandmaster saying that if they're playing against a computer, then they actually have a hard time winning because the computers, they're very, very good at defending this. So this is what we call the Philidor position. This is the position that we want to reach when we have the queen against the rook. We want this position with black to move because this is a Sukhsvang position and Sukhsvang means that the person is forced to do something um, that they don't want to do. They're forced to make a move that will only worsen his or her position. In this position, if it's black to move, then the rook here will have to move far away from the king and that will worsen black's position. Um, so. If it's white to move, we need to find a good move for white here. If you have any suggestions, you can write it in the chat. We need to make sure that white loses a move here. And there is a very, very clever way of doing this. And if you haven't seen it before, it's very difficult to see, which is why we're going through it today. And the reason we want uh, this rook to go far away from the king is because when the rook is close to the king, the rook is defending the king. But when the rook is far away, like over here, it's much more easy for the white queen to uh, to give a check where it's also attacking the rook. And we have a very good question. Isn't the filler opposition a rook versus rook and pawn endgame? Actually, when I was younger, this was something that confused me a lot. But the filler position is something you say about uh, many different endgames. You can also say it about rook versus rook and bishop. And the Philidor position is a kind of... Um, what's it called? It's it's a position that, depending on which type of endgame you have, it's a position that you want to reach. It was something that confused me a lot, but when someone says the Philidor position, it isn't like a specific uh, position, because there are many Philidor positions. So, yeah, <laughs> I hope that made sense. But in this position, it is white to move and white needs to lose, uh, lose a move here for it to be black's turn. And the way to do this is with a very clever maneuver here. And the first move is, let me see if I can uh, move the queen here. The first move is queen e5 check. Um, if the king goes to c8, there is a very cute little mate here on the back rank. And if the king goes to a8, then there is queen a1 check going all the way back here. If the rook goes in between the king and the queen, then once again there is a very very cute mate here. The queen moving all the way diagonally from a1 to h8. So the king has to move back to b8 in this position and when doing that the queen can go to a5 and we have the exact same position as in the beginning just with black to move. There is also after queen e5 check here there is also king a7 but we run into the same that after queen a1 going all the way back and king b8 then queen a5 check. We can also try to note that we have to go to a1 first because if we give the check on a5 and the king goes back to e8 we just have the same position that we had in the beginning and 
still it is white to move and we want the position with black to move so this check here on a1 is very important and then the king goes to b8 and the queen goes to a5 so now we have black to move and there is a lot of places the rook can go here and you don't have to know exactly what to do no matter where the rook goes. Isn't this called triangulation? Yes it is. This is called triangulation because the queen goes to the e5 square then it goes to the a1 square and when it goes to the a5 square then we've seen then we see that the queen has moved in a triangle um, and basically lost the move. And that is indeed what we call triangulation. Very good. Let me just move these. I've gotten better than arrows. Okay. So, here, uh, if we start with the simple ones, let's say the rook goes to g7, then black makes it very, very easy for white because there's queen e5 check attacking the rook while at the same time being a check. So, after the king moves, then the queen will pick up the rook, and hopefully we uh, we can win this. If the rook goes to b2, we have the exact same move. We have queen e5, a check to the king, and attacking the rook. And if we try to imagine this, um, then for this exact purpose, the g7 and the b2 square are the, exactly the same because the queen can attack the rook um, wherever of these two squares it goes to. So the rook won't go to any of those two squares. If the rook goes to f7, then there is still queen e5. Queen e5 is actually the move you play most times, uh, no matter where the rook goes. Um, so queen e5 is just a very good move to remember. So queen e5, and here again, uh, the king has a few different options. If the king goes to c8, then there is back rank mate. If the king goes to a8, then it is also uh, quite simple for white, as this check here on e8 attacks both the rook and gives a check to the king. So the king goes to a7. And after the king goes to a7, this is a bit of a bit of a weird move, and this is uh, this is not easy to remember. So sometimes instead of remembering stuff, it might be better to see if you can calculate your way to it. The move in this position is queen e3, and the reason for that is the queen wants to, preferably the queen wants to give a check on the back rank lure this king to the back rank and then give a check on e8 to attack the rook here. And it's a bit it's a bit difficult to do from e5. Let's say the queen moves to a5 and the king goes back to b8, then we have the same position as we had in the beginning. And if the queen goes to e8, then there is also this is also winning, but it's a bit uh it's a bit further away. The easiest way to win here is by playing queen e3 and after king a6 there will be a mate on a3 so therefore the king has to drop back and after queen e8 then we pick up the rook with a check. So in this position the most tricky lines are probably the ones where the rook moves the furthest away. If the rook goes to h7, then once again we see queen e5 check, king a7. If king a8, then we will have the, the same thing. But king a7, then again the queen goes all the way back to a1. And the trick is that now the queen wants to go to b1. You want to lure this king to the b-file. So there will be a check on b1, picking up the rook on h7. This requires a bit of uh, imagination and an overview of the entire board because you have to notice the checks which also attacks the rook and that's not always easy to do. So after king b8, oh sorry that was not the intention, after king b8 there will be queen b1 and the rook will be hanging on h7. If instead the rook goes to b1 there is 
a lot of squares for the rook to go to, which is why I'm saying that it's not necessarily the best to try to remember uh, these lines. It's best to remember that usually after the rook moves, you want to go to e5 with the queen, and then there, from there, there's not a lot of calculation. And again, after rook b1, queen e5 check. King c8, this one we've seen a few times, there will be a mate on e8, so that is not the best idea for black. Black can try to play king a7. And then now, again, it's a bit of a weird check, but that's sometimes how it is when you want to pick up the rook. You go to d4 to give a check. <laughs> or you could just do it by checking the king and hoping for a blunder. Yeah, that's true. But if you're playing someone good, that probably won't happen because they will try to keep the rook close to the king. Um, and then you have to reach the Philidor position to force the rook far away. Like I said in the beginning, if you're playing this against the computer, you will find it very, very difficult because there is a defense for the rook called the third rank defense. And we're not going to go over it today because it's uh, it's it's kind of tricky. Um, and even <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm doing there. But the best way is to try to get this position and then take it from there. After queen d4, the king has to move. King a6, we know this one, the queen goes to a4. And if king b8, that will happen the same as if the king goes to h8. And what happens is queen h8 check. And now the king is being forced to a7. And then here, a very cute little move. We need an overview of the entire board. There will be queen h7 check. <laughs> the, okay. Um, there will be queen h7 check. So this... Uh, this can be quite difficult to remember, but what we need is the position I showed in the beginning, the Philidor position for the queen versus the rook, and here we want it to be black to move. There is also uh, a few tricks in this queen versus rook that we want to avoid. That is what I will find now. What we have right here is a position that we really want to avoid when we have the queen. Because this position is a draw. Even though we have the queen against the rook. And the reason why this position is a draw is because there's a lot of stalemate, stalemate tricks when it comes to the queen versus the rook. So if anyone has any idea for what to play here. This this is a tricky position, but I'll see if we can give the viewers a little bit of time to see if they can find the right technique um, or the right method to draw this game as black, uh, as white, sorry. You don't want to draw this game as black, that's for sure. Rook b1 draws for for white. Rook b1 isn't the move here. Let's try to look at that. Rook b1 is not a draw. I think the the easiest way to to do it here is probably by giving this check and then the king has to go to d1. There are no other moves. Okay, it's actually it's actually tricky. It's not it's not entirely easy to see. Queen e4 is a way. <laughs> queen e4 that's actually okay, so I showed you the Suxfang position before, but queen e4 in this position is actually a new kind of Suxfang for uh for white. It's very, very uh, difficult for white to move here. If rook a1 check, then the king runs to b3. And if you give a check more on b1, then the king wants, runs to c3. And it's uh, you cannot stop mate here, or you have to you you have to give your rook. If you move your rook to the back rank, then there will be a mate on e1. Um, 
So, so rook b1, even though it is a good try, then there will be queen e4 and we have another silk swan. But in this position, some people uh, have found it. The move is indeed rook a2 for white. And the idea here is, first of all, that if you take the rook, then there will be a stalemate. So all black can do is this position is try to run with the king. If you try king b3, then there's rook a3 check. And if the king takes, then once again we have a stalemate. And if the king moves away to c4, then the queen is hanging. And then, of course, black will take back and we will have a draw. Black does not want to lose this game. So after rook a2, there's not much else for black to do other than playing king b4. And after king b4, the rook will go to b2 again, giving a check. So the king will have to run. And once again, we see that if the king tries to come closer, then there's rook b3 check. And when the king takes, it's a stalemate. And what's really good to point out here is that this queen is taking all of these squares for the white king. The only square the white king has to run to is b2. So if you hang the rook on a square where the king takes it and protects the b2 square, then it will be a stalemate. And those squares are the squares a3, b3, c3 and a2 in this position. If the king captures the rook on any of these squares, it will be a stalemate. So when the king runs to b4, then rook b2 check. The king will try to run again to c4. And then here rook c2 check. And we see in this position that if the king goes to d4, then the king will be on the same line here as the queen. And after rook d2, black will lose the queen. So the only thing for black to do is run with his or her uh, king on the a, b and c files. You cannot go to the d file. Um, but you cannot capture the rook on any of the squares that it checks either. So black cannot escape the checks here and it will be a draw. Um, we can try to look at a at a few more moves if there is still any doubt here. Let's say the king runs and the white rook, rook will just keep on giving checks. There is nowhere for the king to run and nowhere for the king to hide. Still the d file would run into the pin. Um, and let's say that the king once again runs closer. The rook will keep on giving checks and there is there is nothing to do. King a3 and still rook a2 check. There is no way for black to capture the rook. King b3, rook a3 check. So this is just a plain draw. It is completely forced. So that is indeed a position you want to avoid when you have um, this kind of constellation is the kind of positioning of the pieces that you uh, that you want to avoid when you have the queen versus the rook when the queen is let's see if i can do this when the queen takes up too many of the white king's squares you definitely do not want any stalemate tricks. The next thing we will look at is something that many people might not have thought we would be looking at today. But we will be looking at queen versus queen. And many people will say that when you have a queen versus a queen, it's just a, it's just a simple draw. But it's actually not always a simple draw because if the king, like in this instance, is pushed all the way to the edge, then there are mating tricks. And uh, those mating tricks are also some that we will look at a bit later. 
In this position, there is one winning move for white and all the others are draw. I won't ask anyone to find this move because it's simply just uh, very, very hard to find and it's it might be something that you have to know. And the move is queen c5 check. If the king goes to a4, then it's quite easy to see how white will win. And that is by a simple queen a7 check. And there is no way for the black king to move without hanging the a1 queen. So instead, the white king, the black king has to go somewhere else. If king b3, then there's queen b5 check. And if the king goes to a2 here, then there's queen a4 check. And a very important point is that here you have to go to a4. Um, you cannot go to a5 as the position will be a draw. And the reason you have to go to a4 here and not a5 is that when you go to a4, then the king cannot go to b1. Because on king b1 there's queen c2 check. If you go to a5, there is not the same. Uh, there's not the same queen c2 mate. So the king, after the king moves to b1, then this will be a draw. Because there's no way here to force a mate. Let's say you try a check on e1, then the king goes back. And now the king can just shuffle between the a2 and the b1 squares and eventually get the queen out if, uh, if black doesn't trade. Instead of queen a4, doesn't uh, king c2 also win? King c2 also wins, yes. And that's because this queen here doesn't have any checks to give. There's not any checks for the, for the black queen. And no matter where the black queen will move, there will be a mate on the next move. Let's say queen g7, then there's queen a4 mate. Uh, the reason I'm not showing king c2 here is uh, is because I want to, I have this sort of main line thing where queen a4, king b2, then queen b4. King c2 is the quicker mate of these two. I just want to, ero I just want to show this exact position. Um, that we will that we will be able to force from the beginning. Um, but yes, King C two is a win. Queen B five here after uh, King B three was the win, and if King A three because the king doesn't have to go to A two, then in this position there is Queen A five check. Now if you go to B three, the queen on A one will be hanging, so you have to go to B two. And then we see the queen b4 check, um, where the king, uh, we will get back to this position, yeah. So this is the position that we want to reach, was just my point. And then <laughs> when we reach that position in other lines as well, I will show it. After queen, so this was our initial position. And queen c5 check was the genius move. After king a2, then once again we have an only move in this position, and that only move is queen c4 check. Queen a7 would be a draw, because once again we see the same thing as before. When the king goes to b1, there is no kind of mating tricks on c2. But after here, queen c5, king a2, queen c4, now the king still cannot go to b1 as there will be queen c2 mate. And this mate is very important in these lines. So after queen c4, the king has to go to a3. If the king goes to b2, then once again we see the position that we will reach in the end, or the position that I want us to reach. So after queen c4, the king goes to a3. And now, now the tricks begin, because queen a6 check here is the move. If the king goes to b3, then the queen on a1 is hanging. Let me just show that. So instead, the king has to go to b2. 
And after king b2, then you play queen b5 check. The king will go to a3. If the king goes to a2, then we quickly end up in the position that I wanted to show. This queen a4 check, very important, because we want to threaten a mate on c2 if the king goes to b1. So king b2 and queen b4, and we once again have the position that we want to reach. So after king b5 check, the king goes to a3, and then we have uh, queen a5 check. And now if the king goes to b3, the queen is hanging. So here the king has to go to b2. <laughs> it's being said in chat that these queen endings are quite complex. Yes, and that is exactly the point. Sometimes you both get a queen and you think, oh, it's just a draw, it's very, very easy. But when the king is pushed this far out to the edge, sometimes you have to think twice because there will be mating tricks that you might not have considered were even there in the beginning. So after king b2, queen b4, we have the exact position that we want to reach. And the reason we want to reach this position is because this will be a very easy mate from here. If the king goes to c1, it's a mate in two. Let me just see, uh, let me just try to give people a minute to see if they can find the mate here. It is indeed very, very tricky. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be scared if this is not something you understand the first time. This is something that you have to go over and have to look at several times. Okay, yes. Queen d2 check. And now the king can only go to b1. And we see this queen c2 mate that we've seen a few times today. So, instead, the king will go to a2. And now, as it was said earlier, there is this very beautiful mate in this position where the queen has done its job. And now it's the king's turn to act because you cannot mate with the queen alone. You have to use both your king and your queen. And in this position, the move is king b3. After king b3, as we said before, this queen has no checks. If it wants to give a check, it's either on b1 or b2, but there it will be hanging to the white queen. And if the queen moves anywhere else on the entire board, then there will be queen a4 mate. Um, <laughs> except for, of course, if the queen goes to d4, then you don't want to play queen a4 because the queen could take, and that would be a bit of a tragedy. Um, but in this <laughs> in this position, you can you can take the queen if you want to, or if you can uh, you can give this check here, and then the queen has to go to a4, and if the queen takes a4, it is a mate. So this was very very tricky, but I will just I will go over it uh, slowly again, just showing the moves, um, and what's the most important thing to remember about this exact endgame is that when the king is on either the a file or the h file and um let's just say when the black king is uh here on on the a file or the h fi file and the white king is close then you have to then you have to think because there's a good chance that there could be a mate especially when with this queen uh trapped here on a1 and the position you want to reach is the position let's just um is the position here because here the white king is helping is let me just see if i can get a, here here the white king is protecting this c2 square um, and if the king goes to c1, then there is this beautiful mate with queen d2 and queen c2, with the black king taking the only escape square for the black king. And if the king goes to a2, then the king will be trapped. So if we slowly go over the moves, that is the position we want to reach and the way we want to reach it also is by 
when necessary, we want to give the checks on a4 so that the queen can threaten a mate on c2. So this was our starting position, and here it was important to play queen c5. If king b2, then we will quickly have reached the position that we want to reach after queen b4. So instead, king a2, queen c4, king a3, and now the checks can't begin. The king will be pushed back. Queen a6, king b2, queen b5. And if the king went to c1, then we had queen c4. And the king cannot go to b1 because there is mate on c2. So the king had to go to b2 and there will be queen b4. So instead, king a3 and then queen a5. Now the king cannot run to b1, so we don't have to threaten mate. King b2 and queen b4. King a2. King c2. And this is this is by no means easy. And I suggest that this is something uh, you also want to look at yourself because it is not easy remembering the first time you see it. I saw it I saw it once and the day after I had forgotten all about it, so I had to look at it again and again before finally realizing what was actually going on at the board. The next position we want to see is a queen versus a pawn. Um, we will start with this position right here. And the pawns we will be looking at today is when the defender, here white is the defender, white is the one who has to try to hold the draw, has either an f2 or a c2 pawn. Um, these pawns we also call the bishop's pawns because they're on the file that the bishops they start on. So this is when the defender has a bishop's pawn. And sometimes the defender here white can hold the position a draw. And the position is a draw when the king, when the attacker's king is far away. Because as I've said before, you cannot mate with your queen alone. You have to use your king to also mate. And something which is uh, very important here is the stalemate tricks. Um, in this position with the f pawn, the king right here we say is on the wrong side of the pawn. The king wants to be on this side, close to the corner, because when you have c or f pawns, there are a lot of stalemate tricks. So this means that if the black king cannot help the queen, then the position is a draw. And in this exact position, the king is too far away to help the queen. So there is no way here for black to win. The usual way to win positions against a pawn is try to force the opponent to go in front of the pawn. And when the king is in front of the pawn, you can use the time that the defender is not threatening to promote to a queen to bring your own king. In this position, that would be done by queen... I cannot move. Oh, it's white to move here. Oh, no. Okay, I'll just make a stupid move. Okay, cool. Never mind that. In this position, let's say we have this position on the board. Then queen e6, and in this position, the black king is forced in front of the pawn. Now, if black tries to bring the king, this king will go to b2. Something you would rather want to avoid is going to b1. Because when you're the defender, when you have the pawn, you always want to threaten promoting the pawn. Because if you don't threaten promotion, then the then your opponent can bring the king. And you don't want your opponent's king to get too close because you might get mated. So here the king has to go to g7. And after king g7, there are several moves. Let's say the black king goes to e7. Now white is not threatening to promote because the pawn is pinned. And here, king g8. It's very, very important in this position that you go to g8. You don't want to go to h8. 
h8 is not a move you want to make in this position usually king h8 is the move because black cannot take the pawn as it is a stalemate but in this position then black doesn't have to take the pawn black can go in front of the pawn with queen f8 and now there's no way for black now there's no way for white to um to ever again threaten to promote the pawn the king has to go to g7 to h7 sorry and then the queen can take the pawn so please in this position avoid playing king h8 you always have to look for your opponent's moves and here it is queen f8 instead here you have to play king g8 and then after a series move of moves let's say queen g5 then you can play king a j and queen f uh, queen f6 king g8 and now after a move like king g6 then here you want to play king h8 because of the stalemate trick in these positions the queen cannot take the pawn as it is stalemate and white is here threatening to promote so h8 is almost always the square you want to go to so there is no way for black here to improve the position there is no time to bring the king we can try whatever moves we want but there is nothing for black to do you can try to go to e6 but king g7 or king h8 let's look at it if the king is close i have to get the right one here um here once again the white king is on the wrong side of the pawn you want your king on the side with the corner so that you can escape to the corner and have stalemate tricks so in this position we saw some highlighted squares once before but those highlighted squares have disappeared when the king is on the wrong side of the pawn not on the wrong side of the pawn is not by the corner then if the attacking king is two steps away from one of the highlighted squares the position is a win these are the key, key squares in this position it is d7 and g6 if the pawn had been on c7 it would have been b6 and e7 that might be a bit difficult for a bit difficult to um to imagine but here it is d7 and g6 and here we can see that the black king is two steps away from this g6 square and that is why this position is losing let's see how it's losing Queen e5. We want to give a check. And now, king d7. Queen f6 to try to prevent the pawn from threatening to promote. King e8, queen e6. And now the king has been forced in front of the pawn, and white is no longer threatening to promote. So in this position, black can bring the king. And now the king is only one step away from this very, very important g6 square. If king g8, then white is making this very easy for black because white is still not threatening to promote because there's a pin on the pawn. So king g6 here would be a very easy win. Let's just note that after king h8, don't take the pawn on f7. Because this is a stalemate, we really, really want to avoid that. In this position, instead, a move like queen c8 would be made in two. Because there is nothing else here for white to do than to promote the pawn. And after a queen takes f8, it will be made. And if the king tries to go to f8 in this position instead, then the pawn is hanging with checkmate. Of course, white wants to make this more easy for black, so white goes to g7 and now threatening to promote. Here, queen e7, pinning the f7 pawn. 
You could think that after queen d7, you're also pinning the pawn. But one thing you have to be very careful of here is that the king goes to h8. And the winning maneuver or the winning method was kind of the thing we saw in the queen versus queen. You want to bring your king closer. And now if, if white takes a queen, then there will be a mate on a2. But when the king is, when the queen is on d7 in this position, then you have to be very careful because in this position, black, white can actually under promote to a knight, which is a check and also threatening the queen. This is something we really want to avoid. So instead in this position, we really do prefer the move queen e7. Queen d7 is also winning, but it just takes a bit more time. So you really would rather want to play queen e7 because now you're avoiding that a knight promotion will threaten the queen. The king moves. If king g8, then once again we play king g6. And now if you take a queen, then there will be a mate on a2. And it is this um, important thing that when the king is on the back rank, then promoting to a queen down here is actually threatening the queen. And the way you win this position is by allowing your opponent to promote and with the promotion comes a mate. If king h8, then once again, let's be a bit careful. Let's not take the pawn because this is still stalemate. There are several ways to win this. There is queen f8 and then afterwards you can take the pawn. But there is also the simple king g6. And after a queen, then there will once again be a mate on h7. So the important thing to remember in this position is that when the king is on the wrong side of the pawn, the defending king is on the wrong side of the pawn, then if the attacking king is two steps away from either the d7 or the g6 square in this position, if the pawn had been on c7, it would have been two other squares, then the position is winning. And that is what we want to remember. It is a bit of an, an another story when the king is on the right side of the pawn. In this position, the king is on the right side of the pawn. And that is the right side because it's close to, to, the, to the corner. And the king wants to go in the corner because of the stalemates that we saw before. Now for this position to be winning, the king has to be one step close to either the e7 or the g6 square. Before we saw that it was the g6 square and the d7 square, but in this position it's the g6 square and the e7 square. Indeed, queen endings are really, really, really tough and we're going through a lot of stuff today. Remember, that you can always re-watch this video and you can go through it slower or faster if you want to because there's a lot of subtleties to remember in in these kind of positions and we're we're going through a lot of stuff today i'm just trying to fill your brains with as much information as possible so that you can re-watch this again and hopefully um hopefully you will have seen some tricks and you will have uh, learned what to do when <laughs> but back to the position that when the king is on the right side of the pawn I just I keep on mentioning this because it's so important because this is the right side because it's close to the corner and we have a lot of stalemates because when the king is in the corner the queen can never take the pawn as it will be a stalemate g6 g6 e7 this king has to be one step away from either of those two squares for that to be winning. And what we see here in this position is that the king is um, just a, a little bit more than, than one step away from either of these squares. So this position is a draw 
uh, by the methods that we saw. We just don't want to fall into any tricks. Let's say queen g5, the king goes to h8, queen f6, king g8. It's not as important to remember the moves here. What we want to avoid is going in front of our pawn. We do not want to go in front of the pawn because we want to threaten with promotion. If we don't threaten with promotion, um, here, let's say, then the black king will be able to come further and it will be more dangerous. In a position, in the position here, we just want to go to the corner because the black queen can never take the pawn on f7. So, you can, black can try all he wants, there is no way to win this um, at all. I don't know if anyone has any any questions to this, but the point is just that you want to go into the corner with your king so that your opponent will stalemate you. What we have to be careful of is one of the things that we saw before. Let me see if I can try to get a position like that again. Um, I don't even know if I can. Let's say here, 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 and here. Now, that was not the correct moves, but just don't in this position. In this position, just don't go to h8. Um, because then there's queen f8. You want to threaten with promotion. In this position, you have to go to g8. Very tough to remember in time trouble. Yes, it's it's tough to remember, but you don't have to remember the exact moves if you remember the ideas. Like in in the, in this position, you don't have to remember the moves. You just have to remember that you want to go to h8 because your opponent cannot take the pawn. Um, <laughs> and I think a lot of you would be surprised that what we're going through here, this it's actually some of the simplest queen end games. There's so many nuances in so many different queen end games, even queen and pawn versus queen. It's so difficult to understand all of it. And these are just, these are the easy ones and these are by no means easy. But let's look at how, let's look at when this position is winning. Because even if the king is on the right side of the, this pawn, then the position is still lost if the attacking king is close enough. And the attacking king is close enough when it's one step away from either the g6 or the e7 square. So, in this position, the way to win it is by pinning the pawn. This is the simplest way to win the position. Pin the pawn because in this position here, white doesn't threaten to promote because the pawn is pinned. If the king goes to h8, then we see the important thing that was highlighted in the beginning. This king is one step away from the vital g6 square, and here the king can just go to g6. Because even if the pawn can promote, then there will be queen h7 mate. And if the king goes to g8 then we have the exact same thing the king is one square away one step away from this vital square and the king can go to g6 and even after promoting there will be a mate on h7 so from this exact position the position actually isn't too difficult to win if you just know that you have to bring your king to g6 at the right time. You don't want to bring your king there at the wrong time. Um, when is the wrong time even to bring it? <laughs> I don't know. Queen e7 here is the easiest because if the king tries to go somewhere else like h7 then the pawn will be hanging. The most normal here is that the king would want to go to h8. 
um, because you hope for your opponent to take the pawn as it will be still made as I've said so many times today but the king will go to g6 and we will have uh, made after promotion and queen h7 so we actually still have 10 minutes here today so I want to ask what you found the most difficult if there's something you want to go through again or something you want me to explain in a different way because I really do realize that these positions are so complex and they can be so difficult to understand and we've been going through them a bit quickly today and because it's online it's not always easy to ask the questions you want to ask so if you have anything that really 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 confused you and you couldn't understand um, what was happening or you couldn't understand the ideas then uh, let me know can you teach the queen versus rook uh, endings versus rook pawn i guess it's uh i guess it's queen versus rook you mean we can go that was also the first thing we looked at so <laughs> honestly like I, I don't expect, um, how about the pawn in g7? Okay, so let me see here. I don't, okay, let's actually, um, we're, we're focusing on queens today. So let's take queen. Let's, uh, let's take the queen. Ooh. Um, yes, I can do this. Set up position. Okay, clear. And then how do I put in a pawn? Oh no. How do I... Uh... Aha! No, I know how to do this. Okay. Here. And then here. And here. And here. Great. I'm a genius. Okay. <laughs> Who's it to move? Oh, it's... Okay. Like this. This position. Um... Oh, okay. Uh, queen versus Rook and Pawn let's let's not look at that today let's try to keep um into some of the some of the stuff that we've been looking at uh exactly today because otherwise i think it's just it's just too much information and it's it's so complex already thank you bakus i know it's very very professional let's say we have a knight pawn um a, a knight pawn is either a g or a b pawn and these positions are actually I'm gonna say these positions are actually easy to win because there are no stalemate tricks for white here. The way you want to win this is by forcing the white king in front of the pawn. And when the white king is in front of the pawn, you will bring your own king and in the end it will be a maid. And the reason you want to force the king in front of the pawn is because then your opponent isn't threatening to promote. You want to, you want your opponent not to threaten with promotion because as long as your opponent is threatening to promote, you have no time in bringing your king. In this position, um, a very simple move here first is queen h4 and the king is forced in front of the pawn. And when the king is forced in front of the pawn, you bring your own king, king b2. In the positions with the knight's pawn, it doesn't matter how far away your king is. Your king can be on the other side of the moon and still make it there in time to capture the pawn. Or to help the queen mate. Let's say king c2. Now white is threatening to promote, so there's no time in bringing the king. King c3 and white would take a queen. And it would be happy days, it's a draw. So after king c2, black has to make sure that white can't threaten to promote. That's done by giving a check. Now if the king goes in front of the pawn, you can bring your own king. Because now white is not threatening to promote. Eccentric horse, I see what you mean now. Yes, we could have taken that one, but uh, this one might be, uh, oops, this one um, might be a bit easier to understand. So I think we'll take this one. 
Um, so the king will move. And now once again, white is threatening to promote. So the queen will give another check. And here it's important, you want to go closer to the pawn. Because if you just keep on being, uh, let's say that you just keep on being far away, then there's no way for you to force the king in front of the pawn. If you just keep on being down here. You want the queen to go closer. And you want the queen to go closer. And king c2 here. And now the queen cannot really go closer, so there's queen c4. If the queen, if the king goes to e8, then yes, you can bring your queen closer. But let's say the king goes to e7. In this position, there's no way to bring the queen closer to the king. Let's say you go king e5, queen e5, then the king can go back to c2. But instead, in this position, there's queen g6. White cannot promote anymore, and the king has to go to f8 to protect the pawn. And after the king goes to f8, there's queen f6 check. And now the white king has to go in front of the pawn. If the white king goes to if, if the white king goes to e8, then the pawn will be hanging. So the king is forced in front of the pawn. And now since white is no longer threatening to promote, the king will go closer. And this is just the way you win it. Here, after king h8, then white is not threatening to promote actually, because the pawn is pinned. So you can bring the king closer. It's more tricky if the king goes to h7. But once again, uh, there are several ways to do this. Queen f7 pinning the pawn might be the easiest because if the king goes to h6 then white is not threatening to promote because black is controlling this promotion square and even queen g8 is probably the easiest way to win because now white can never threaten to promote again. So here the white king would have to go to h8 and after queen h4 there is no other thing for do to white than to go in front of the pawn. And black brings the king closer. And this this is basically just how you do it. King C King F8 and the queen goes to F4. And from here you bring your king closer. Um if I kept on explaining I would basically just be saying the same stuff. And now, when the black king has gotten this close, then we're very, very close to the to the mate. Now, when the king is in front of the pawn, there is no threatening to promote. And when the king goes to f6, then we will have mate in one. King goes to... There is no other move for white here than king f8. And after queen f7, we have a mate on the board. So basically we have to push the king behind the pawn to develop our king and win other only with checks and we will not be able to develop our king. Um, yeah, so we have to basically just what I've, what I've been trying to say is that you have to force the defender's king in front of the pawn so they're not threatening to promote. And when they're not threatening to promote, you can bring your own king. And when your king is close enough, then there will be a mate like the one we've seen here. <laughs> Sergio, we were looking at quite complex endings earlier. Okay, so I think uh, this was the hour that we had today. I hope that you've been enjoying these end games. I know they can be a bit difficult and a bit complex, but remember you can rewind this video and watch it as many times as you want. You can watch it faster uh, you can watch it in a faster pace or you can watch it in a slower pace, whatever fits you. If you have any suggestions for me to improve my uh, future videos, any um, positive things, any negative things, please do let me know. I am reading all the comments both on YouTube and on Coach's Twitch and I would love to hear your thoughts. So thank you everyone so much for today. I look forward to the next time and I hope that you've been enjoying. <laughs> bye bye.